Habibi, I have such a juicy video for you today. I guarantee that this video alone will make you attract anything that you want. I'm going to be talking about things about the law of attraction that you've never heard of in your whole life. And especially if you're a Muslim, like this is actually going to blow your mind, Habibi. But seriously, I'm actually about to reveal some deep knowledge that's not only going to help you understand the entire law of attraction, but for me so far, this has helped me just make like a decent six-figure income. So I'm not a millionaire yet, to be honest. Like, inshallah, next year in 2024, I will be. But so far, you could say I've been living comfortably with six figures, while at the same time, like, not having a job or doing, like, all this work that people usually do, like, a nine-to-five. But also, this helped me go from 110 pounds, I was so skinny back then, to now, I'm almost 160. Basically, I'm just 158. This also helped me marry the girl that I want, which was pretty beautiful. And then I finished university with good grades. So unlike other people, like, I actually kind of do have a degree, by the way. <laughs> but, like, am I actually using the degree? Well, no, it's a different topic, okay? <laughs> so listen, in order for you to understand how this entire law of attraction thing works, well, first of all, you gotta understand the true reality of you. So in the Quran, it actually says that you are the sum of three things, which is the brain, the heart, and the soul. Now listen, I'm gonna try my best to translate the words in Arabic from Arabic to English, but sometimes you'll see it's like they're a bit synonymous. So for example, when I say the brain or the heart, like, yeah, you could call them both the mind, but I'm trying to call it the brain just because... Like, mind is not usually the brain. You know what I mean? So if you look in the Quran, it says, in the sam'a wal basara wal fu'ada, kullu ula'ika kana anhu mas'ula. Which basically means hearing, and then seeing, and the fu'ad, which is the brain. Now this is the thing. If you go on Google, and you type in, like, what is the word fu'ad? It's going to tell you it's like, oh, it's the, the, the heart that basically gets motions and stuff. But if you look in the Quran, fu'ad, anytime Allah uses the word fu'ad, it almost always refers to, to the brain itself. And by the way, this is important knowledge for you to get before I teach you how to do a lot of attraction things. And that's why it says right here, it's like Allah extracted you out from the wombs of your mother, not knowing a single thing, and then he gave you hearing, vision, and intellect. So once again, he uses the word fu'ad, but here it's translating it to intellect. So just trust me, I did all the research, I did all the studying, and the word fu'ad in the Quran, it actually means the brain. So it's not the heart, it's the brain itself. So it's this thing right here. This is the brain. This is yours. And by the way, something very cool is that the brain is where everything seen happens. That's why within the brain, you can actually measure thoughts. So thoughts are just basically electrical things. You can actually measure those things. So yes, this right here is actually the fu'ad, which is pretty, it's actually pretty beautiful. So this is the brain, and then these are the eyes, and all of this is just like the nervous system, right? Now what's so beautiful is that in the Quran, it literally says it's like the hearing, the seeing, and the fu'ad, the whole purpose of you getting these things is for you to become grateful for them. To become thankful for them. And why do you think that is? Well, think about it. It's like the hearing, the seeing, and the, the brain, like the thoughts. All these things, they happen without you even asking for them to happen. Like, just imagine, it's like when you were a baby and you were learning how to ride a bike. Like, your brain was actually working, right? You were It was working to help you ride a bike, to learn how to do it. But then when you learned how to do it, it just became automatic. You didn't even have to be thinking about it. So Allah's giving us all these things just so we become thankful. We become grateful for the hearing, the seeing, and the and the thinking. And by the way, what's so beautiful is that even like the fu'ad, Allah is saying that كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولَ That the hearing, the seeing, and the thinking, all of these things, you're going to actually be asked for them. You're going to be asked about them on the day of judgment. So by the way, it's like when you're getting thoughts that are evil, just so you know, you'll still be asked about these things. So learn how to control your thoughts. And by the way, this whole video, I'm going to truly teach you how to control your thoughts. But anyway, so this right here is the brain. So this is the first part. The second part is the heart. Now with the heart, I'm not really talking about like the cardiovascular heart, which is right here. I'm talking about like the actual emotional heart, which is the thing that you get your feelings from. So if you look right here, the heart, you can measure the emotions and the feelings, but you can measure them in, in frequencies, right? You can measure them in hertz. And that's why this guy, Nikola Tesla, he's like, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy frequency and vibration. So these right here are, are all frequencies, right? So the heart emits all these things. And by the way, the proof of this is that when you look at every emotion, almost every emotion, like anger, it comes from the heart. Fear it comes from the heart. Disgust comes from like the belly, which I talked about before. But like happiness from the heart, sadness from the heart. So the heart, if you look at it, first of all, you know how the brain has like, like, like different compartments, like it's like wrinkly and stuff like that. So it's like you have not just one brain, but like different parts of the brain. But the heart, you only have one heart. And this is in the Quran too. Allah says that I only gave humans one heart. So this one heart, it's like you're either feeling this or this. You're not always feeling like different emotions. So you're either happy or sad. You're either a believer 
or a disbeliever. But the beautiful thing about the heart is that it deals with things that are seen and the unseen. So that's why you can actually measure the emotions and frequencies. But at the same time, if someone were to like open up your chest, you can't really take the heart out. Like the heart is not really something physical. Like, yeah, you could tell me it's like, yeah, but all these like hormones and these emotions, you can still measure them and all that stuff, but it's not really physical. And this is the beautiful thing about it. Because once again, the law of attraction, the whole thing about the law of attraction is that you're taking things from the unseen and you're bringing them to the scene. So the brain only deals with the things that are seen. The heart deals with the things that are seen and the unseen. The beautiful part about it is that there is a third thing. And this third thing is the soul. Now the soul, Habibi, the soul is so powerful. In the Quran, for those of you, and this is going to blow your mind, for those of you who are Muslim, the soul is the nafs. And I'll prove it to you, Habibi, I'll literally prove it to you. But this right here, this entire like electromagnetic field from the heart, this right here is the soul. So the soul, it only deals with the things that are unseen. Now let me just give you like an analogy. So brain, which is the fu'ad, and then the heart, which is qalb, and then the soul, which is the nafs. So the soul, this entire thing, it deals with the things that are unseen. So it brings things from the unseen, and then it puts emotions or feelings within your heart. And that's why as a result, you start to get thoughts that somehow you never really get them without this unseen thing. So that's why they say it's like the greatest wealth you can have is a wealth of ideas. The more great ideas you have, the more you're going to start making money. And by the way, Habibi, like this is how the law of attraction works. Once again, the brain is only seen. The heart is unseen and seen. And then the soul is only about the seen. So if you're trying to influence the soul, well, you got to go to the heart first. And if you're trying to influence the heart, you got to go to the brain first. So listen, the other thing too is that this entire electromagnetic field, which is the nafs, which is the soul, all the things that you want, the house, the money, the car, the women, literally everything, all of that stuff is here. All of it is here. So if you're trying to get the house, well, first of all, you have to emit a certain frequency right here and right here that's the same as the frequency of whatever you want so that's why people who are basically like they're always depressed or they're always like like ashamed of things and they're always suffering you'll see that their, their electromagnetic field of the heart or the soul it's a bit weak and as a result they start to attract all the weak things in life they start to attract poverty they start to attract like like homelessness or like depression and all that stuff so if you're homeless, man, you just gotta, you just gotta fix this. That's all you gotta do. Now, some of you guys are gonna come to me and be like, well, Habibi, how am I supposed to fix this? Once again, I'll show it to you from the Quran itself, actually. And by the way, like even in books, for example, like Joe Dispenza's books, he's actually talking about these things. So if you read this entire book, you would see it's like, so this right here is the soul, right? Which is like a normal light field. Now, when you're living like all these bad emotions, you're diminishing this light. So once again, the nafs, the nafs is the soul. When you're living in survival mode or when you're sinning, this light right here or the soul right here is going to start to diminish. Now, the scary part about it is that in the Quran, it actually tells you is that when this thing is diminished, well, when it gets diminished, there's going to be something else that comes and replaces it. And that thing is the devil itself. So I know some of you guys who are like non-Muslim, you're going to be like, what are you talking about? It's true, Habibi. When this is diminished, you're going to have devils coming to you. And that's why sometimes some of you guys... Habibi, do you know mental illness and all that stuff like schizophrenia or like ment like multiple personality disorders? All these things, I don't know why they don't say it, but all these things are coming from this right here. All of these are basically devils that are destroying your life. So if you basically fix this soul right here, all of these things are going to be fixed up. And I truly mean that. So that's why sometimes you would see if you're living in such like a life like this, you would start to get ideas in your brain or feelings in your heart that don't really make sense. And I've talked about this before. It's like, just literally sit down and try to like, listen to your mind. Listen to your mind and just see what's happening in your mind. What you'll notice is that you're gonna start getting thoughts in your mind that you'll, you'll just look at it and you're like, bro, who is making, who is giving me all these thoughts? Where are these thoughts coming from? And why are these thoughts in such a way? Why are these thoughts evil? And why is it sometimes I get thoughts that are not evil? And this is the exact reason when the soul when the light or the electromagnetic field, all, all these things, like all these words are the same, even the nafs, when this is diminished or when it gets destroyed, there's going to be devils that are coming and they're going to be whispering all these thoughts to you. So that's why it's like, if you're trying to become rich and by rich, I don't mean just like rich in terms of money, but like rich in terms of everything, health, wealth, love, all these things. If you're trying to become rich, but your entire like electromagnetic field, like the soul is not really in check, you'll notice that 
your entire life is going to be bad. Anything that you do is going to be bad. I actually had a guy. I had a guy that I was, like, I was mentoring him. And this guy is like, whatever he does, I would tell him things that are, that are so good. Like, I would tell him exactly what to do to go and make money. This guy goes and does them. And he's like, I'm trying so much. Like, I was telling him to go on cold call. He's like, I'm cold calling so much. And I'm still not getting any results. And I'm like, Habibi, like, that's literally impossible. Like, he's getting people that are actually picking up. But they just, they just can't get closed. So then I give him like a ruqya, like something that he can listen to. That's basically going to help him make this entire field a lot better. And then he started getting results. And by the way, look at this. Thoughts are electric, just like I said. Emotions are magnetic. The brain and the heart work together, creating this entire electromagnetic field. So this entire electromagnetic field, once again, if you were to basically give this a word from the Quran, this is the nafs. So by the way, this entire nafs, this entire soul, is not part of the human. Just so you know, the soul, the nafs, is not really human. The nafs comes directly from Allah. That's why when you go to sleep, the nafs... It actually goes back to Allah. So your brain and your heart and like in your entire body are sleeping, yeah. But the soul, the nafs, is not sleeping. It's actually gone. It's all the way with Allah. So that's why if you look at it, like if you don't sleep for three days or four days or five days, first of all, like you, you'll start getting schizophrenia because your nafs is going to start to become weak. And then the devils, it's easier for them to come and give you like like bad thoughts, evil thoughts. And if you still don't sleep, as a result, you'll, you'll, you'll just die. And that's why there's this ayah right here, which basically says, Allah Which basically means, Allah takes the souls, and it's so funny, because like sometimes even the translators themselves, they actually translate the word nafs to soul. So it's not just like yourself, it's the soul itself. So Allah takes the soul at the time of their death, and for those of you who have not died, He would take it at the time of its sleep. And this is why when I tell you, the moment you fall asleep, try to fall asleep in a state, like have this feeling of the thing that you want as if like it's already happening. And it's because when you're sleeping in a state where whatever you want, it's like it, it already happened. And then the soul or the nafs goes back to Allah. This is the best way, literally the best way to bring something from the unseen to the seen. Because remember, it's like where is your soul coming back from? From Allah itself, from the creator. And then that's why when the soul comes back in a state of like when you have like great feelings of the things happening... Then you'll notice, it's like your, your entire day, you're going to start to get thoughts that lead you to going and getting the thing that you want. But by the way, here's the scary thing. So the nafs, or like the entire soul, you need to know how to actually clean this whole thing. Because if you don't clean it, naturally, like the soul or the nafs, it has this inclination that when you don't clean it, it just goes against you. And that's why we say things it's like, Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha. It's like, oh Allah, like grant my nafs its piety. Like, give it its protection. Because when the nafs is not protected, it just, it becomes chaotic. It becomes, like, explosive. Like, impulsive. So then you would see people like, like Joe Dispenza, who are basically talking about how to, how to clean this whole thing. Like, how to clean this electromagnetic field around you, which is your nafs once again, which is your soul. He talks about how to clean it. But then I realize, I'm like, Habibi, like, we've had the solution in the Quran the entire time. And most of us are not realizing, like, how big of an impact the solution is. So right now, I'm going to be giving you seven solutions that you can do to clean this entire electromagnetic field around you. And then as a result, what's going to happen is that your heart, your heart is going to be at ease. Your heart is going to start having more emotions and feelings that are that of like high frequency, like, like love, joy, peace. And then as a result, what's going to happen is that once again, it's like electromagnetic field, once it's fixed, that your, your feelings are going to become fixed. And then as a result, your brain is going to become fixed. So this entire thing is just going to like... Is going to literally make your entire body not only better, but like your entire life. And by the way, there's a hadith that basically says, Muhammad Sallallahu he basically said, is that there is a morsel in your body that if you clean it, the entire body is cleansed. And then if you don't clean it, the entire body is going to be destroyed. And that morsel, that thing, is the heart. So when you, first of all, when you clean the heart, this electromagnetic field around you is going to become cleansed. And then your, your brain is going to become cleansed. So instead of you doing all these things about like affirmations, like I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful, or like I'm great, I'm a lion, all these things. You don't need to do all that stuff, by the way, Habibi. Some of you guys literally sit down every morning and you're just like, I'm rich, I'm rich. Like imagine the donkey saying to himself, I'm a lion, I'm a lion every morning. Is that donkey going to become a lion? He's not going to become a lion. So right now, if you're not rich, you can't just say things like, I'm rich, I'm rich. 
And then as a result, automatically you, you become rich. That's not going to happen. But then if you learn this formula right now, which is if you clean the electromagnetic field around you, you clean the heart and you clean the brain, you'll have basically dominion. You'll have control over all these things. And then that's when, when you start literally saying anything that you want and those things happen. Just because again, the electromagnetic field, it's magnetic. It's magnetic, bro. That's why it says electromagnetic field. And the things that you want, they're all magnetic. So when this is fixed, you'll start to attract things to you. And by the way, for those of you guys who are going to tell me, it's like, wait, wait, wait. Like if you if your nafs is not cleansed, it's going to become against you. How is that possible? Let me show you how. If you look right here, this entire passage right here, you don't have to read it. But if you look here, it's like, it says, Which basically says, Qabil, you know, remember when I talked about Qabil, when he killed his brother, Havi? Like they actually have pictures of it right here, like, like little paintings. Like it's not the devil that told him to go and kill him. It's his nafs itself, the soul itself. So how come a brother kills his own brother? Think about it. It's like when your heart is so inflamed with emotions of jealousy and hatred, as a result, this entire nafs, this entire nafs is going to start emitting certain frequencies and is going to tell you to go and go and kill him. You know how sometimes we say, well not sometimes, all the time, we're like in Ramadan, there are no devils in Ramadan. So if there is no devils in Ramadan, how are people still doing bad? It's because of their soul. Their souls have gotten so dirty to the point that their own soul is telling them to go and do bad things. And by the way, you would know if your soul is dirty, is that if you're just sitting down, like you're just sitting down normally, and all of a sudden you're just feeling horrible. It's like, why are you feeling horrible? Or why are you why are you getting evil thoughts? Where are those evil thoughts and horrible feelings coming from? Even though your entire reality right now, nothing's really happening in it. And by the way, that's why sometimes you will even see people who naturally, they just emit light from them like sometimes you meet people and just naturally you feel so good about them it's like you just want to you just want to become their friend why is that it's because their entire soul once again their soul is emitting like good energy like this stuff is actually real and it's so funny because even when i tell you this knowledge right now a lot of you guys i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are feeling like it's like it's like i almost know this like i know what i'm saying right now is the truth and the only reason you're feeling like that is because it is the truth, Habibi. Like this knowledge is innate. It's actually innate within you. Like you're born knowing this knowledge. So knowing that, let me teach you right now seven things, seven steps that are going to help you clean the nafs and the heart and the mind. And as a result, whatever you want, you just will it and you'll get it. So look, so the first thing, the first thing that we're going to be talking about is dhikr. Now dhikr, it basically means remembrance, remembrance. Now, dhikr is not really going to make your nafs or like your soul at ease. It's going to make your heart at ease. Now, if your heart is at ease, once again, it's like the heart is like the, the middleman between thoughts and your electromagnetic field. So the heart, if it's at ease, then both the mind or the brain and the electromagnetic field, they're going to become at ease. And that's why Allah says, it's like, Allah bi qulub. In the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find rest? And by the way, the opposite of remembrance is forgetfulness. So it's like the more you live in forgetfulness, the more your heart is not going to be at peace and the more your soul or like your nafs is going to become destroyed. So Allah also says it's like, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ Like it's in the Qur'an. But then they translate it as like themselves. So don't be like those who forgot Allah. So he made them forget about their own soul. And if you're forgetting about your own soul, what's going to happen to it? It's going to start diminishing. And then little devils are going to come to you and giving you, feeding you evil thoughts and feelings. As a result, giving you an evil life. Now, by the way, listen, when I say do dhikr, I don't mean do dhikr like once per day or something. I mean do dhikr every moment throughout the day. And that's why, Habibi, you know, so I made a video the other day. I was talking about how you can do like an Islamic meditation called muraqaba. And then some of you guys just kept coming to me and you were like, you're teaching people bid'ah. How? Habibi, how am I teaching people bid'ah? I'm telling you, do dhikr. All I'm telling you is just literally sit down and try to remember Allah. Try to remember that there's someone who's actually watching over you. There's someone who's always aware of you. Even if you're not aware of them, he's always aware of you. Like Habibi, who's, who's digesting your food? Who's making you healthy after you're sick? Who is... Fixing your skin when it becomes bad. Who's making your bones and your muscles grow? That's not you. There's something more intelligent than you and something more aware than you. So I'm telling you, try every single moment throughout the day. Just basically remember Allah. Remember the Creator. Even if you're not Muslim, just remember there's always that one thing 
that's always taking care of you. It's like, once again, like, I actually don't remember growing all this hair out. I didn't do this myself, Habibi. <laughs> it was someone way more intelligent than me, way greater than me, who has more power than me, who just made this come out without even me asking for it. And by the way, even if you're like an atheist, you can't really deny this. You can't deny that there is something that's making this come out without you making it come out. There's something that's doing all this, all this work within you, and that's not really you. And yeah, sometimes you can tell me, it's like, yeah, but it's like a cascade of events and all that stuff. Yeah, but who's the one that's making these cascade events happen? There is a, there is a source, there is a root. And by the way, some of you guys are going to tell me and be like, wait, but I do a lot, like I do dhikr, I still pray, I do dhikr and all that stuff. Well, look, it says right here, the hypocrites, they try to deceive Allah, but just know that he's the one that's actually deceiving them. And when they stand up for prayer, they do it lazily. But then they also don't remember Allah, they don't do dhikr for Allah except a little so if you're doing dhikr but you're only doing it for a little who else is doing it for a little it's the hypocrites so are you a hypocrite so when i say do dhikr i mean do dhikr every single moment and you can do it you don't need to only do dhikr with the tongue just the fact that you can remember that allah is watching at this very moment is dhikr you're remembering allah and if you don't remember allah if you don't remember your creator that's why every human nowadays they're in a state of depression. And this is, once again, in the Quran. So this was the first thing that you can do that's going to help you make your soul or your nafs a lot better. Because when you do dhikr, your heart is going to be at ease. And then as a result, your entire electromagnetic field is going to become at ease. And this way, the more you do dhikr, the more whatever you ask for is going to come to you easily. Literally easily. Without you even doing a lot of effort. And just, just try this. Like literally, just do a bunch of dhikr. Like say alhamdulillah, say astaghfirullah. Just basically remember Allah. And then you'll notice it's like slowly, slowly. Slowly, slowly, this electromagnetic field around you is going to become bigger and you'll feel it. But once again, you don't do this for a little. You don't do this for like just a short amount of time or like just a few number of times throughout the day. You do this every single moment of the day. And then the second thing is gratitude. Now, gratitude for some reason, like a lot of people are saying gratitude, gratitude, even Gary V. And it somehow it started to sound a bit gay to be honest, but it's not gay. So in the Quran, it actually says, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ so remember how I said it's like the electromagnetic field around you, it has everything in your life. So every, like the money, the house, the cars, everything that you have in your life, it comes from this electromagnetic field. So Allah is saying is that if you're becoming grateful, as a result, when you become grateful, I'll give you more things through this electromagnetic field. And what's the proof behind this? Well, this is one proof, yeah. But then look at this. وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ Habibi, when I learned... The real definition, the real meaning of the word nafs, everything changed when I'm reading the Quran. It makes way more sense right now. When you're grateful, you're only becoming grateful for your soul, for this field. This field is what gives you everything. Obviously, Allah is the one that's putting all these things, but He's putting it through this field. Everything comes from the unseen to the seen. So when you're becoming more grateful, Allah is basically putting these things in your electromagnetic field. And then as a result, it's going to give you feelings of gratitude even more. And as a result, you'll get thoughts that lead to you going and doing the action to get the thing that you want. Do you understand me? Like this stuff, for those of you who are Muslim, this stuff has been in the book for so long. But for some reason, it's like whenever you guys read, or even me, honestly, man, even me. Like whenever I used to read all these ayats, it never really hit me because I never really understood like the, the deep meaning behind all this stuff. Like the word nafs itself. I never... Honestly, I never really understood the word nafs from before. But now it's like when I just understood it as the soul. And it truly is the soul. Like it's such a it's such a game changer. So this is the second thing. If you're trying to make your soul or like your nafs a lot better, like stronger, just do gratitude, man. So the third thing is awareness. Now awareness, in the Arabic word, this was translated to basira. So the, the word basira or awareness is that you'll be able to somehow like like tell the future. But it's like, how are you going to be able to tell the future? Once again, when you know the formula, electromagnetic field, and then the heart, and then thoughts, you'll know how to do it. So what I mean by awareness is that anything that you do, try to look at things while at the same time being aware of Allah. And what's going to happen is that when you're looking at things and being aware of Allah, this electromagnetic field is going to start increasing. And then the more you do this, the more Allah is actually going to give you abilities that you could say it's like supernatural. And I'm not talking about like fortune telling like, or like haram abilities and all that stuff. I'm talking about things like, like for example, you would be able to tell if someone is good or someone is bad just by looking at them. Like I genuinely, Habibi, like I can look at someone right now and I would know if they're bad or good 
just by looking at them or even know if they're sincere or not again just by looking at them but in order for you to be able to do that like just try to have awareness in whatever you do like if i'm talking to you right now as i'm talking to you i'm literally trying to become aware that allah is watching me and he's the one that's actually making me speak and just doing this like i remember some people say it's like just doing this alone is going to get rid of any disease any problem literally any negative thing in your life because if you think about it it's like awareness it's like allah in the quran he says that allah is the light allah is the light of the earth and the heavens so if you're looking at things in your life naturally they're dark but if you're looking at them and you're looking at them from like while well, still being aware of allah naturally now you're just bringing light to them so whatever you're looking at you're bringing light to it so if you're looking at someone immediately you're gonna know are they good or are they bad because now you have light. You're actually looking with light. Imagine that the entire world is dark, and now you're looking at it through light. But again, this actually takes practice. But the more you do this, the more your electromagnetic field around you, the soul, the nafs, is going to start to increase. And once again, it's like the more that you can will things into the world, and they just come to you. But once again, it's like, how are they coming to you? Obviously from Allah. But how is it coming from Allah? From the seen to the unseen. From the electromagnetic field, the nafs, to the heart, to the brain. And then the action, so awareness. But the next one is uh, is guidance. Now, what I mean by guidance is that, you know how sometimes, <laughs> here I wrote, I was like, living your life based on scenarios. So if you live your life, so if your bank account goes down, and then automatically you become sad, and then when the bank account goes up, automatically you become happy. If you're always living like that, you'll notice that your, your nafs is going to start to become weak. And then when the nafs is weak, you can't really attract anything that you want in your life. So instead, live life with guidance. So what I mean by that is become unattached to outside circumstances. So when, when something happens, whatever happens, you're unaffected. It doesn't really affect you because now you're actually guided by Allah. You're guided by the Creator. So what I mean by that is that you know the end result is always good. So Allah is a Rahman. Allah is like the most merciful. So just know that whatever is happening in your life, always remember that all is well and why is it that all is well well if allah is the one that's running the show if the creator is the one that's doing all these things then just know that the end result of anything is always good it's just that we with our brain with our mind we don't really have the capacity to understand <laughs> the capacity we can't really understand the meaning behind everything so it's like you got into an accident well don't be sad allah will put me in a better situation but it's not like it's not hope it's just knowing literally knowing that anything that happens to you, it's only for you. Nothing ever happens to you that goes against you. So when you're living like that, you'll notice that your entire, once again, the electromagnetic field is going to become increased. It's going to increase. And as a result, the entire formula. I hope you remember the formula by now. Do you know the formula? But anyway, so this is living with guidance. And that's why we always say it's like in the Quran when we pray, we're like, إِهَدِينَ السَّرَاطَ mustaqim, Like guide us to the straight path. Because if you're truly guided to the straight path, and by the way, don't be thinking of the straight path as like this path where you walk on it to go from like whatever to like heaven or hell. That's not what it means by the straight path. The straight path is that whatever thing happens to your life, you're unaffected, man. Because you know it's like everything is made from Allah. You're guided. But anyway, so the next one is struggle. Now, what I mean by struggle is that, think about this. The more you struggle in a thing, the more your nafs activates, which basically means the more energy you spend, the more energy you get. And then the less energy you spend, the less energy you get. I notice it's like whenever I'm tired, if I just go and do more work, naturally, I'll just get more energy. And then when I stop doing work, when I just go and relax, I'm like, you know what, let me just go and relax. Naturally, my energy is just going to go down. And by the way, you should notice that if throughout the day, you're always living, like even if you're a Muslim, right? Like you're praying, you're doing your dhikr, you're doing like all the stuff that you're supposed to do. If you're doing all these things, but you don't feel like you're struggling, the nafs or like the electromagnetic field is not going to grow. It's going to stop growing. So every day, try to do something, do something that's actually hard and just like like struggle with it, struggle towards it. So if every single day you're saying 100 times istighfar, like you're saying 100 times astaghfirullah, just know that like if it's becoming easy, then the effect is going to start to go down. So if you start to basically increase the number of saying astaghfirullah, like from 100 to 1,000, now you'll notice that not only will you get a better effect, because now you're actually struggling towards it, but also like your nafs is going to become better, is going to become stronger. And by the way, these are just like, these are basically laws in the Quran that make your nafs stronger. And that's why there's quotes like, like there's no jihad, like struggle against the self, 
like la jihada ka jihad nafs which is basically like the greatest struggle is the, is the struggle against the nafs which is the soul and then here it's like if you struggle against your your nafs your soul you will obtain the pleasure of allah you'll basically get a proper good life so jihad is basically a struggle so if you're always struggling against the nafs like you're always trying to do things that are hard and not always things that are easy then this is the best this is actually going to make your nafs a lot stronger this is why it's like when we see things like technology technology is making everything easy like don't go against it but like just try to go against it you know what i mean like if you if you're going to an elevator every single day use the stairs if every single day you're just using like a gps to get to your location do it without it so every single day just try to think it's like how do i make this thing a bit harder just so as a result i can grow and by the way again it's like if things are not hard anymore you'll stop growing so anyway so this next one is cleaning the human remember remember what i said so the nafs the soul is not really human the the heart and the brain is human so i think it's like how do i clean the brain how do i clean the heart and this is so easy like i didn't even have to write anything for this but i've talked about so much about this the food that you eat the things that you consume like you read the things that you listen to all these things matter the stuff that you watch all these things matter man so like no more porn no more listening to like struggle rap or like all these horrible music no more eating horrible food all these things actually affect you and as a result they actually affect your nafs they affect your soul and by the way you'll notice it's like the more you do these things the more this entire love attraction stuff is not going to work for you because the more you're going to start feeling less grateful you're going to start feeling like like just horrible like shamed guilt that's how you fall into poverty that's how you fall into into depression so just cleaning the human once again it's like what is the human well it's the brain the brain and the heart this is the human and then this last one is doing good now what i mean by doing good is amal salih which basically means it's like you don't just do th like work or things that look good i'm saying do things that are good so doing beneficial work like don't just do work for the sake of doing work only because it looks nice that's not what i mean like you see sometimes for example when i make these videos for you it's like once again i'm making these videos with no fancy editing with no beautiful background with just none of these like fancy things all i'm trying to do is just make videos that actually leave you with proper value like as soon as you finish the video you actually have proper value for you so even though like the colors of the whole video the editing is not like fancy and stuff you're still benefiting from the videos i mean i hope you're still benefiting from the videos and i hope you always leave with more wisdom and more knowledge as opposed to someone who's like making like an amazing painting but it's like this painting is not really it's not really benefiting anyone so you'll notice that the more the more like proper work that you do like like good work that you do the more your nafs is going to start to become a lot better and by the way by the way you guys do know it's like if you look at my entire channel like i used to make videos about how to make money online and all that stuff which i still do but i started to focus more now on making videos like these videos that actually benefit people not just the same repetitive stuff just because even like me making this stuff right here it makes my soul it literally makes my soul expanded it makes my soul more energetic so it's like the more energy i put into this the more energy i have for myself too the more stuff i'm giving you of value the more good i have coming into my life too so i know the formula this formula never it literally never breaks so the more i do good work for you the more good work is going is to come back for me and this is for everything even you that's why they say it's like the more value you provide the more you'll get back so these are the seven things that you do that are actually gonna they're gonna change your life so much so i mean they could they could is the first one just because it's the most important Dhikr, you should literally be living your entire life, your entire day, just in the state of dhikr. And then gratitude too. Like, why would you go through a day without actually having gratitude? And by the way, the best way to have gratitude is look at something that you have and go deeper into it. For example, it's like right now, I have this beautiful mic right here. Go deeper into it. It's like the one that gave me this mic, which is my brother. He actually bought it for me for my birthday. It's like, this guy is so amazing, man. He actually went and bought me a mic just for me. Like he was literally thinking of me. And then go to like go deeper like think of your brother think of all the things that your brother has actually done for you and how would your life look like if he wasn't there and just be grateful for it and just know that gratitude is like a signature it's literally like the signature for already this receiving the thing that you want so if you want something like just being grateful naturally for anything it doesn't even have to be for the thing that you want just being grateful for anything is like a signature that you already have everything you need you already have everything you want and as a result once again like your electromagnetic field is going to become stronger so you'll get that thing within you you'll receive it a lot faster and by the way man i know this video is so long 
But this is so this is so important. Once again, the whole formula, this electromagnetic field around you, right? If you're always if you're always doing all these things and you're cleaning the soul, you're cleaning the nafs, as a result, what's gonna happen is that your heart, you're gonna start getting like more, like higher level feelings right here. And then the more you start to get higher level feelings, you'll feel expanded. But the more you get this, the more thoughts and ideas are going to come into your brain that are actually good. Because now the soul is protecting you. It's not broken. There's no holes in it that allow devils to come and whisper things into your ear and put you in poverty. Because remember, the devil itself, he actually promises you poverty. He wants you to be in poverty. But when your nafs, when your soul is cleansed and is strong, you'll get feelings that are here. And then the more you get feelings like in here, the more thoughts of good are going to come to you. And when you're always getting these like these good thoughts, and you're actually acting upon them, like thoughts that are coming from Allah, like million dollar thoughts, when you're, acti when you're acting upon them, that's how you'll notice that anything that you do, any work that you do, is always going to be perfect. Because now, you're not doing it from your own thoughts. You're not doing it from the devil's thoughts. You're doing it from thoughts of your own creator. He's literally putting all these thoughts to you. And even more beautiful too is that, if you're sleeping in a state of already getting the thing that you want. Like you're actually getting these feelings right here and you're doing the seven things I just told you about and you're getting these feelings right here and then you fall asleep in that state. When you wake up, whatever thing that you want that you fell asleep on, like the thoughts and the feelings, you'll get the thing so easily. You'll get it in such a way where it feels effortless. It's going to feel effortless and it's going to feel like you didn't even have to really do that much to get that thing. I mean, you do know when I actually got married, man, like, when I got married, like, I literally thought it was impossible to marry, like, the exact girl that I wanted just because of, like, reasons I don't I don't want to say. But yet, even though on the outside it looked impossible, not because of me, obviously, right? But on the outside, it didn't look impossible. It still happened. Because I was literally, like, every single day, I was going through these things. And I was making sure it's, like, this entire, like, this entire electromagnetic field, the soul, is actually strong. And when this is strong, Allah's going to start to put things in here that later lead to the things actually being in your own life. So anyway, I hope this whole video was actually helpful. If it was, dang man, you gotta let me know. This was actually a long video.